Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to learn how to put a timer on the screen. So we're going to be doing some string formatting and also we're going to keep track of the time. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's start by having something we can display on. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself a new UI text, just like this. Then put my scene in 2D so I can actually see it. And I'm going to move this around a little bit, so I want this to be anchored at the top. Have a specific width, let's say 500 to 15 height. And I will center my text. And this is what we're going to be using to make a timer. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit, say 75. Put it in a white color, just like this. And now I'm going to be using this very game object to display my timer object. So I'm going to go ahead and rename my text object. I'll say it is a timer text. Oh, a little mistake in there. Also, I'll just put some placeholder text right there. Okay. Now, what we need to do, we need to actually create ourselves a script that is going to be updating this very game object. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my car. I'm going to create a timer on my car object, so new C Sharp script, and I'm going to call this timer. Let's open this up. Okay, so in there, what we first need to do is we need to have a reference to this game object. Okay, so in order to have a text field in our script, we need to include the Unity oh, Unity Engine, so Unity Engine dot UI. Once this is done, we can now declare a public text, and I'm going to call this timer text. Save this, and I'm going to go in game, assign it manually. So I choose my car. Here I have my timer script. I'm going to click and hold right on the timer text. And now we have a reference to this very object on our timer script. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is declare myself a start time field. Then I'm going to assign in the start function. So start time is equal to time dot time. Now time dot time gives us the time since our application start. In this case, since I'm doing it in the start and my object is on the map, it's going to be the same, the exact same. But say we want to start a timer a little bit later on in the game, then we need to store our start time somewhere in a field. And that's what we're doing just for good practice. What we're going to do is declare ourselves a float t, and this field is where we'll store um, the time since the timer starts. So float t is equal to time dot time minus the start time. So this gives us in a float uh, the amount of time since the timer has started. And the float we get is in seconds. So say we have a float of 4.5, then it has been four and a half seconds since the timer has started. So what we're going to say here is we're going to clear ourselves some strings because we want to make text uh, for our timer text object. So string minutes is going to equal, and now we need to cast this in int, so open parentheses twice, int, then we're going to say time divided by 60 to string, just like this. And this is basically going to give us t divided by 60, so the amount of second divided by 60. And since we cast it into an int, it's going to remove all the decimals. So we get the amount of minute since it has started. And then just below that, we're going to say string seconds is equal to t modulo 60 dot to string. Let's close this off. And finally, we're going to say timer text dot text is equal to minutes plus seconds. Okay, let's check this out in game now. Going to press play. And we do have our timer text, but it is a little bit messy because we have so much decimals uh, after the seconds. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here in the two string. And I'm going to send a parameter called f2. So it is a string that I put f2. And it's going to basically, this is going to define that I want only two floats, or I mean two decimals in my float. Now, if I press play, 
Okay, now we can see that it makes way more sense. So we get two decimals in the seconds. If we want no decimals at all, I think we can just write F0. Or if you want four of those, you can write F4, and so on. So this simply gives us a zero decimal float. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it at two because I like having those uh, numbers going up super fast. Okay, so we're about to approach the minute and everything works just fine. As you can see, the minute is now one and we've reset the second um, text. So before we close this episode off, I'd like to do one last thing. I'd like to actually stop my timer. So I've created myself a cube just here. I have removed the mesh and I assign his boss collider as on trigger. So this way I can actually know when, whenever something enters it. And uh, I also created a small script just here. I'm going to show it to you. So basically what this does is when we enter the box trigger, it finds my car object and send it a finish option message. So I'm going to go in my timer, write a public void. I'm going to call finish. And in here, I am going to say timer text. Timer text dot text, actually never mind. Timer text dot color is going to equal color dot yellow, and I'm also going to make sure that I need to end this timer somewhere. So I'm going to declare myself a float. I mean a bool. Private bool finished is equal to false, and say if we are finished, then return. Else we do this. And in my finish function, I'm going to say finish is equal to true. Okay, let's try this out. Press play. And now I'm going to make, I'm going to make it to the box collider. And it's on the other side of the map. So whenever I enter that zone, the race is finished. And oh, I made it in 13 seconds. Now my timer has stopped and everything is as I want. So that's pretty much it for this episode guys. If this was helpful to you please leave it a like and also if you have any questions make sure you post them in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.